The early 2570s saw the birth of the Star League, a landmark diplomatic achievement that brought the Age of War to a close, ushering in a centuries-long golden age of prosperity, technology, and relative peace. Yet even from the beginning, it was not a perfect union. When the minor states of the periphery refused to join the new Star League, one of the first acts of First Lord Cameron was to declare war against them in what became known, ironically, as the Reunification War. Though successful in bringing these states into the League, the Reunification War brought with it a growing resentment that would agitate against the heavy taxes and lack of High Council representation, laying the foundation for the League's own tragic destruction. However, for over two centuries the Star League did stand strong. It presided over a period of technological development which resonated down to every citizen under its sway. Advances in agriculture, medicine, communications, and computer technologies facilitated a dramatic increase in the quality of life, perhaps most especially the hyperpulse generator, which allowed for near instant transmission of data across the stars. Under the prosperity of these times, the Star League expanded. Worlds previously thought impossible to settle now became colonizable. The yields of mines and farms were significantly improved, and even the deep periphery began to be explored, mapped, and settled. Military technology advanced as well. To maintain its superiority over the private armies of the House Lords, the Star League Defense Forces endlessly sought new military innovation. The heavily populated and industrialized Heron hegemony kept itself ahead with new inventions in battle mech and warship technologies. The Camerons also steadily issued edicts designed to curb the ambitions of the Great Houses. These policies succeeded for a time, but it did not deal with the core issue a rising mix of jealousies and rivalries amongst the House Lords. In 2751, 180 years after the formation of the League, First Lord Simon Cameron died in an accident while touring a mining facility in the periphery. This left rule to his underage son, Richard. In the interim, the High Council appointed the commander of the Star League Defense Forces, General Alexander Kerensky, to the post of Regent, thinking the old military man could easily be manipulated. Meanwhile, Stefan Amaris, the ruler of the Rimworld's Republic in the periphery, steadily built a rapport with the naive young Richard Cameron, even as he gradually poisoned the youth against the rest of the Inner Sphere's leaders. By the time Cameron came of age and assumed the First Lordship, his paranoia was fueling policies which quickly isolated him from his High Council. To make matters worse, his overbearing policies towards the periphery states was the spark to set off a long, simmering spirit of rebellion there. The rebellions widened into large-scale conflict, forcing the young First Lord to send ever more troops. When his longtime friend, Stefan Amaris, offered aid, the inexperienced First Lord agreed against General Kerensky's advice. Amaris then moved a large number of his forces into the heart of the Star League, claiming that he was reinforcing it. Late in 2766, Amaris had gathered enough forces to make his move, presenting Cameron with a laser pistol as a gift in the throne room. Amaris himself mounted the steps, took the pistol out, and then shot the First Lord through the head. At the same time, his forces positioned all over the hegemony quickly seized control of the bulk of their worlds. Declaring himself Emperor, he then called for support from the Council Lords and General Kerensky. Amaris's clumsy diplomacy had the opposite effect. Instead, Kerensky declared Amaris a usurper and immediately arranged a ceasefire with the other states in the periphery to allow for a mass mobilization against the treacherous forces now holding Terra and over a hundred other important worlds. For their part, the Council Lords, now stepping up their long-running arms race to a fever pitch, were busy with their own plans and wouldn't commit to either side. Kerensky's campaign against Amaris lasted 12 years, ending in September 2779, and in the end, the usurper was defeated and executed. However, Kerensky's armies had paid a staggering price for its victories. The SLDF forces had been worn down to a fraction of their previous strength, and the vast hyperpulse generator network connecting its worlds had been completely disrupted. Worse still, the Council Lords stripped Kerensky of his title of protector, then dissolved the Council permanently. Foreseeing what would come next, Kerensky moved his main fleet into orbit over the Draconis Combine world of New Samarkand, and broadcasted a call to all loyal Star League troops and their dependents to him. Over three quarters of the SLDF responded. In 2784, with his massive task force fully assembled, General Kerensky and his army jumped out into the periphery and beyond, never to be seen again. 
the same time, an organization called Comstar was formed from the ashes of what remained of the League's Department of Communications, and it claimed Terra for itself, and asked each of the Great Houses to recognize its neutral sovereignty and services. The former Council Lords, busy planning for their coming war with each other, readily complied. With the departure of Kerensky and his forces from the Inner Sphere, the Five Houses, now the Successor Lords, seized the ravaged but still valuable worlds of the former Terran hegemony and began a war with each other that made all other wars in human history to this point pale in comparison. The Star League was no more.